Hello, I'm speaking from a little forest near our place in southern Jarrah people's country and I want to talk about diversity and inclusivity and where that's come from, the universal ethics of that and where it's heading. <clears throat> in indigenous cosmology there is right way and wrong way and many cultures have understood that the flip from being in right relations to wrong relationship can happen very quickly. We see this in political movements, within activist groups, within individuals' lives. Uh, almost, well, no one is immune to this flipping between right and wrong story or right and wrong relations. And even though in a Western sense, right and wrong and the game of right and wrong is deeply pro pro problematic um, because that's the dominant cultures, particularly in politics, um, way of doing business. Who's the bad guy? Identify with the good guy and um, create a kind of um, false binary where nuance and um, uh, openness and curiosity is degraded and righteousness and virtue uh, is um, elevated uh, by those who think they have the right position. But wrong story and right story is different within indigenous cosmology as far as I can understand and as far as I can reach back to my own indigenous wisdoms through my ancestors, through my genes, through all the um, microbial ancestors that have come through and continued to create um, part of my logic center. <clears throat> but certainly learning from indigenous elders and friends uh, about this difference or understanding that wrong and right story doesn't come from human centric place, that it actually is how country responds to us, how the earth responds to us in what we're doing. So it's much more about custodianship than some moral um, authorities position on who is right and who is wrong. So diversity and inclusivity are, are terms that are really bandied around today. Uh, every single council in Australia, I think, local council, state government, federal government, all bandy the necessity for diversity and inclusivity. Um, and this comes, these, this has come from a pathway of human rights activism over many, many years of attempting to encourage people to connect with the other, to be curious, to first examine um, the conceits and prejudices in our own selves before judging others which is, um, belongs to a spiritual commons to um, draw on Mark Berman. What I'm finding today is that diversity and inclusivity have been used in a kind of weaponized sense. Um, and I think the term this week came to me, industrial diversity and inclusivity complex. Uh, much like green technology, um, came 20, 30 years ago, maybe 40 years ago, as this potential 
to unhinge our addiction to oil um, and power ourselves down with technologies that drew on uh, regenerative sources such as the sun and wind and how those ideas have been corrupted so that now we have to dig up the entire earth to replace oil and gas uh, with um, so-called renewable technologies that require a, a lot of mining. Similarly, diversity and inclusivity is becoming another industrial complex like green technology um, where you have to create the incorrect crowds uh, in order to promote the true heroes or saviors of inclusivity and diversity. This kind of uh, flying the fl flag of diversity and inclusivity where certain people are included in the club and others are not. I've mentioned before my definition of inclusivity today is your story triggers me, please don't tell your story. So that um, unless you have the correct story, your story cannot be heard. And that will create a, a pathway to uh, inclusivity and, um, and therefore peace. And so what's happening in this kind of push for inclusivity and diversity is actually the opposite. Uh, it's creating um, many different subclasses or contagion classes, the unvaccinated, the vaccine injured, um, trans kids who are now detransitioning, um, women and men arguing for sex-based rights, anti-green tech activists um, such as Derek Jensen who, uh, and many others who are uh, calling calling out the so-called fix, ecological and climate fix, um, of the green tech sector. So basically anybody who is against the thrust of government endorsed correct speak is against diversity and inclusivity in the industrial setting of that. There has been this quick slide, um, it's probably been happening for several years if not a couple of decades but this quick slide from those universal ethics of diversity therefore uh, which is to my mind um, all voices are heard and seen and with curiosity and openness and love and wonder um, to this uh, authoritarian top-down idea of what is correct and what is incorrect, what thoughts can be spoken and what thoughts must be left, left out in case somebody might get wounded or hurt. So this is a very dangerous precedent. We've seen this time and time again in human societies where ideals quickly become wrong story. So I guess these are just some of my thoughts looking at yeah, the weaponization of language, how what one would think as universal ethics of diversity and inclusivity are being weaponized to marginalize people, to divide us, to, um, to create contagion classes uh, and to, to create a, a conformity as well. That these are the conditions and um, a set of rules where diversity and inclusivity can take place and everyone else is wrong and therefore not worthy of um, discussion, curiosity, uh, open-hearted um, interest. So yeah, it's just another example of this culture of make-believe using language that sounds lovely and soft and rosy and full of potential and peace and actually the opposite is occurring. True diversity is what happens in a forest. 
there are thousands and millions and trillions of um, mutual relations. There are also predator-prey relations. Death occurs, life occurs, living, dying, decomposing, growing, birthing. All of these things take place um, and rely on diversity and sometimes inclusivity and sometimes exclusivity. And in fact, to be fully uh, diverse, you need to have some levels of exclusivity. And in order to be inclusive, we have to understand the role of exclusivity and how it interacts with diversity, how it um, forms the basis for diversity. Exclusivity is eating another and exclusivity is excretion. All of these things are required to make more life possible. These are just some thoughts at this time. Really happy to hear your criticisms, your, your um, commentary on this subject and your observations, um, particularly from a curious and open-hearted point of view. Thanks for listening.